Hi, my name is Greg Lindberg. My favorite thing is Full House. Welcome to the Finding Favorites podcast, where we explore your favorite things without using an algorithm. Here's your host, Leah Jones. Hello and welcome back to Finding Favorites. I'm your host, Leah Jones. Let's see. It's Saturday night, August 28th. This will come out tomorrow on the 29th. Earlier this month, I was doing like back-to-back records with fans of the Doughboys. And so this interview with Greg is kind of the last of that round of Doughboy fans, of interviewing Doughboy fans about things other than the Doughboys. That has been (laughs) the mini series we've been on, and it's been a blast. Um, So Greg is from the podcast Fresh Questions Air, and we are talking about just nostalgic TV. We're talking about Full House. And for the record, we talked about Nicole Byer being the Bob Saget of our generation before it was published by Vulture that she said about herself. So maybe I heard her say it about herself on a podcast. Like I said, recording this little intro on Saturday night, we had our second B'nai Mitzvah back in the synagogue this morning. It was really nice to be in the building for, for it and help be with the family especially because it was one of the celebrations that we postponed. Uh, what it was, I don't know, maybe a week. It was supposed to be in like March of 2020. Um, so it was really nice to be in the building with the family, all masked up and helping them with the tech running the camera. Monday m- afternoon, I have a lung biopsy. My breast cancer journey continues in a somewhat unorthodox way. Um, Northwestern is very thorough and I have some lymph nodes they need to check out a spot in my lung and they are doing that, um, just to be safe, but all points sign, all signs point towards this being a, you know, better safe than sorry, but probably nothing. So mostly what I'm thinking about is it's a 1.30 Monday afternoon appointment. I have to be FPO, eat nothing, for eight hours prior, which means that I have to stop. I can't eat after 3 a.m. And the nurse, when I was talking to her about scheduling, was like, well, but we know, like, she's like, it's going to be hard because the operating room will definitely be running late by the time you're scheduled to be in there. So I have just been trying to figure out, do I stay up until 2 a.m. tomorrow night and have a big pasta meal? Like I'm going to go run a marathon, uh, like a pre Yom Kippur fast style meal. Um, so that I'm not completely miserable by the time I get out of cert- out of, um, anesthesia and recovery. Um, cause a lung biopsy, they, they knock you out for it. So that's what I'm trying to figure out, like my eating schedule pre-biopsy. That's what I'm thinking about instead of what the results could be. I did set up a Caring Bridge site for anyone who wants the longer full story about my breast cancer journey. It's caringbridge.org slash visit slash Leah Jones. You'll need to have a Caring Bridge account to look at it, uh, but I'm not like approving every person who looks at it unless I decide it's gotten creepy. And then I will do that. Have a great week. Enjoy this conversation with Greg. He is a fellow Hoosier. He stayed in, in Indiana. And so we talk about corn detasseling and, uh, fall pranks in Indiana and some of the famous people who came from Indiana before we dive into TJ Friday and full house. Um, So be safe, wear your mask, wash your hands. And if you're eligible for that booster shot, get that booster shot. Hello and welcome to Finding Favorites. 
I'm your host, Leah Jones, and this is the podcast where we learn about people's favorite things and get recommendations without using an algorithm. Today, we continue my tour of the Doughboys fan community of the Dose Chord, and I'm so pleased to have with me today um, Greg Lindberg. He is the host. He is one of the hosts, the main host. He is the Nick Weiger, the Paul Shear of Fresh Questions Air, a podcast of fresh questions. Um, very fun. It's a trio, and sometimes you've got guests. So, Greg, how are you doing tonight? Good. Great. Yeah. Thank you for having me. I'm so happy you're here. <laughs> and a very classic Bart Simpson t-shirt. Yeah, it's actually uh, just like what I go to bed in. So. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've never grown up, I guess. <laughs> yeah, celebrating the end of one job with your classic Bart Simpson mm -hmm. PJs. Yep. So, so Greg, are you in? Are you 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 are one of the Hoosiers in the Dose Chord, right? Yeah, I, I think there might be one or two others, but I've definitely talked about Indiana a lot. I grew up in Indiana since I was like. Four. My parents moved. I was born in uh, Phoenix, Arizona, but my parents moved here when I was four. So, um, I mean, basically all I know is Indiana yeah. <laughs> for the most part. But um, yeah, I I, uh, I know you're in Chicago, right? So I'm in Chicago, but I'm from Terre Haute, Indiana. Oh, no. Oh, no. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I graduated high school in 95 and uh, other than three years that I've lived in Colorado, I I have been in Illinois ever since. I, the the town I'm from is Co or the city of Kokomo. Um, I mean, it's a really weird town because there's a lot of weird stuff about it. Um, there's the world's largest bull and a giant tree stump. Um, <laughs> there's a lot of weird <laughs> things that have happened there. Uh, but um, I tried my best not to learn about a lot about Indiana. But my job that I'm leaving right now i was um working for extension which covers 4-h all the things throughout the state so i was i learned like counties i never heard of and like yeah. I didn't, too much about indiana that i i didn't need to know no there's so much good stuff to know about indiana because there's more than corn in indiana yes <laughs> yeah that's uh the catchphrase of indiana beach which is a cool place but uh it just changed, got new ownership. And I hear that it's, it's kind of, it's like as pricey as going to like Kings Island or Cedar Point now. Mm. And it's like, that's not really worth it. <laughs> no, that's not the point of Indiana beach. Indiana beach <laughs> is like a super sensational, sunny vacational, uh, affordable family vacation. Yeah. And that's really close to me. Um, we had a guest on our podcast that had, um, had fond memories of, uh, Santa Claus or uh, Holiday World. Yeah, yep. Santa Claus, Indiana. Yeah, yep. there's a place called Santa Claus, Indiana. <laughs> um, yeah, I've never been there. There's like a lot of stuff that I just haven't been to. But there, there's a lot of stuff about Indiana that I do like. And I'm glad people are um, embrace. Like I, I really have been a part of like the Indianapolis and music scene and um, uh, know a lot of things that have been going on in the music side of things. Uh, there's been a lot of bands that have come out of Indiana in the last 20 years, I think, uh, Duran Jones, uh, Margo, Margo and the nuclear so-and-sos. There's been a, a lot. I'm, I'm no, I'm going to leave out a lot of people, but, um, <laughs> uh, yeah. And, and like Kurt Vonnegut being from Indiana. Yep. Yeah. So, I mean, David Letterman. Yes. Uh, Jim, uh, Jim Gaffigan. I was going to say Jim Davis, but yeah, all the gyms. I mean, I think Jim Davis <laughs> also, right? Yep. Yeah. 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 I went to, um, I went to Ball State for my first year of college, and uh, then I transferred to per Purdue University. And um, every time I would drive up to Purdue in Fairmont, Indiana, there's mm -hmm. this. I, I shared this on the Dose Cord um, because uh, we have another podcaster on the Dose Cord that does uh, Garfield comic strips. Yes, <laughs> and reviews a new strip every um, episode, and there's this giant billboard that just has like Garfield and he's like really close to James Dean <laughs> and they're just like on this giant billboard and it says like, welcome to Fairmont. And I would see that all the time. And I don't know, it, it, it was funny. Cause that's where Jim Davis grew up in and yeah. um, James Dean was from, but it's, it's a funny a, billboard. It's a classic, it's a classic pair. 
<laughs> it was, I always like imagined in my head, I think it was Mandela effect that Garfield like had his arm over like James Dean, but like on a shoulder, like a Joe cool mm-hmm. hangout. I, I will say since um, he'll never listen to it because he doesn't listen to our podcast I, at all either. Um, but our co-host Brad Rogers, who is kind of like, he's not really like the Mitch of the podcast. He's uh, <laughs> <laughs> he's, he, he's um, he, we really have to, you know, it took a long time for him for us to get him in line, I guess. But uh, I will say that much. And uh, we we did go to James Dean's grave one time mm-hmm. over in Fairmont, and we took pictures that he. I mean, we were young, like we were in college, and it was just dumb, and it made it. We made it look like he was peeing on James Dean's grave, mm-hmm. but <laughs> I mean, he didn't really. But <laughs> he's always worried about being canceled, so I'm just going to go onto other podcasts and try and and try talk and cancel him from him. other yeah. podcasts. Uh, I mean, why else be college friends with somebody <laughs> yes. and how and go on on other podcasts? So you also have a bit of a shiner. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I warned you about that before. Yeah. we started. It was this a 4-H injury. No. They're like, we know he's leaving the extension office. Get those goats. Chase I, him I, down. I have had some meetings today and that's like the first thing people are like, are you all right? And I, I never like. Uh, it looks like I've gone to a fight, like for the listener. <laughs> I have like a, actually I got glasses on, but I got like a Ooh. cut and then I got, um, it looks like I, I, I have a black eye and it looks like I got punched in my right eye. Um, the, the, the truth of the matter is that my daughter, who's almost two, was going down a slide in our backyard, a tube slide, and I was going up in it to like catch her and um, her head hit my like eye really hard mm. she like landed backwards and um she had like a uh, a necklace uh, like a plastic mi- mini mouse necklace that i guess those plastic things can be sharper than they look and it just like cut me right there on the top of my cheek Ooh. <laughs> so she was like i mean she did a little cry but like little kids are really tough right <laughs> and parents get beat up but yeah it's a really the only other time I've ever had a black eye in my life, I was in high school and I, um, I don't know if it was like parkour or whatever, but like I, we were jumping over trash cans and mm-hmm. stuff. And I tried jumping over a trash can before going to class and had this like huge, like, it looked like I got into like a massive fight and my parents to this day still don't believe that's what really happened. But uh, yeah, I don't have any cool, cool fight stories. I'm not a fighter. I am also <laughs> not a fighter. My high school black eye was... I was on swim team my freshman year and we were warming up and we were sharing lanes with the divers already a terrible idea. And as we came under the diving well, we were supposed to go down to like half of our lane and no flip turns because you, you can't like having people do flip turns like underneath the diving well was, was going to be a recipe for disaster And the girl warming up in front of me forgot just muscle memory did a flip turn. She came up and out of the water in a, in to do backstroke and came up and just clocked me with her shoulder right in my eye, (laughs) broke my goggles in half. So then the goggles like popped open and they kind of snapped across my cheek. So I had like a long mark on my cheek and a really bad black eye. And it was the night that we were playing our rivals, our crosstown rivals. So everybody was like, oh, when you go to school tomorrow, just tell them you should have seen the other girl. (laughs) And that was like my one bad black eye was a swimming, a swimming warm up accident. (laughs) That's crazy because I um, I think that's a sport where you don't expect like to be a contact sport. Like I did cross country in high school and people would like purposely like try to hit your like shins with their like uh spikes and like you could be bleeding or you could fall like you don't think of those types of sports certain sports being like injury prone but yeah yeah not those injuries (laughs) uh that was the only season i swam and then i i transferred to our rival high school and then Mm -hmm. i did marching band just like bring it on yes i think that's what happens on bring in bring it on (laughs) the transfer transferring to the rival Mm -hmm. yeah yeah um, have any, um, exciting summer plans as, as, uh, we look from August, I guess, into the fall. That's in bananas. 
I, I, uh, I hope so. I hope to go to Chicago in the next month to um, the Pitchfork Festival, but I don't know. <laughs> I'm sure you probably have the same. I mean, all of Palooza just happened. So, mm-hmm. I mean, it's kind of like, uh, I don't know if this is really going to happen or not. And I don't know if, you know, how excited I am about going as I was like a couple months ago. So we'll see. <laughs> Plans yeah. are kind of changing for a lot of people, I think. It is unfair to judge other Chicago music festivals by the complete banana pants insanity that is Lollapalooza. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I only watched the the Limp Bizkit for some reason. I watched. I couldn't stop watching it for some reason, but yeah. I watched theirs. Uh, or the I skipped stream. through it. Yeah. Yeah. I just kept seeing videos on TikTok and on Instagram <laughs> of of like the humanity. Mm-hmm. And when people were like, well, 90, 90 percent, the mayor said 90 percent of the people there were vaccinated. That that 90 percent of of the 300,000 people yeah. that came through over the course of the weekend. Mm-hmm. So it left like 30 or 40,000 people unvaccinated mm-hmm. that came through, which is not a small amount. Yeah, exactly. But, yeah. And Chicago is such a mobile city. Like mm-hmm. you just think of the L subway, like how easy that stuff's transferred. Like even before like COVID, I was always like not trying to touch doors Mm -hmm. with my hands and stuff. So you can only imagine. Yeah. It's just, it's a bummer, but I don't mean to, (laughs) I, I hope that, uh, I, I'm looking forward to fall. Like, I just feel like that's, that's my favorite season. So I'm just looking forward to, um, like, my uh, son is four years old and he's starting to get, he's getting more into like just hiking. So I look forward to like doing more hikes and stuff with him. Nice. And are you now four and two starts to get more fun for <laughs> Halloween too, doesn't oh, it? Oh yeah. Yeah. We were thinking, well, once I think my wife uh, brought it up and I'm kind of, <laughs> once she brought it up, cause we dressed my son up. I think he was two. We dressed him up as Chucky <laughs> And it, like you could tell, like some parents were like, mm, "I don't know if you should have done this because I gave him like a fake knife too." Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I, my wife mentioned maybe dressing her daughter up as Annabelle, and I'm kind of like, "We got to do that." So, <laughs> who is Annabelle? She's the doll from The Conjuring. You probably, oh, if you saw a picture of it, you might. Okay. No, yeah. Um, I <laughs> have not seen The Conjuring, but I'm sure I I have a. Uh, I have a a girl, a woman, I mean, we're in our 40s, we're middle-aged women now, (laughs) that I went to high school with who makes, like, essentially haunted dolls, and she she buys those, like, those those dolls that look very human, but she makes them into, like, werewolves and vampire babies, and so I am certain she has done an Annabelle. Oh, that's awesome. I've seen an Annabelle come through my Facebook feed. My son would love to see that. He's obsessed with, um, it's probably all my fault, but he loves like Goosebumps. And like his first movie I took him to was Goosebumps 2. Like they were showing it like free at the theaters a couple years ago. Yeah. And uh, he's just, he wants to be a werewolf. Like Halloween's his favorite. Nice. He loves spooky stuff. Scooby Doo. <laughs> Anything <laughs> kind of a, I'm try, it's hard to blur that line of what's too scary for a, a kid. Right. Once they start to get a little more fearful, but. Yeah. yeah, I'm excited. Halloween's definitely like my favorite holiday. So, um, so here's an Indiana question for you. There, there's something that I've been trying to figure out. I've been trying to isolate. Like, is it a Terre Haute thing? Is it an Indiana thing? Growing up as like a fall prank, did did people in your town go corning? Corning. It sounds familiar. We were kind of more of a, a city than a rural town. I don't know if that's like a rural prank more than a, yeah. It's, it's shucking corn. So you have like dry corn in mm-hmm. your car and you drive by houses and you throw corn at them. <laughs> dry corn. <laughs> I'm not surprised. I've never heard of that, but that totally okay. sounds like an Indiana thing. Like I I grew up, uh, like the first thing I ever did is sort of like a job was um, detasseling. So mm-hmm. <laughs> I definitely get like the corn thing like but uh it wasn't until like I at Ball State I think I took a sociology class and there was like a lot of Indiana 
hazing and things like that, that I didn't mm-hmm. know about, like, cause there's a huge Amish community in Indiana. And I didn't know there was a thing called like flowering until I was in that class where people would just take bags of flour and like, when they would drive past a horse and buggy, they would throw it at. Yeah. No. Yeah. I never knew. So I didn't, I never indulged in horrible things like that. Just no. to be clear. <laughs> I, I've that, never heard of that. Corning. I, I mean, there were guys <laughs> in my high school who grew like, small crops of corn in their front yards so that they wouldn't steal anybody's crops. Mm -hmm. But Terre Haute's a city. It's a, you know, but it's like surrounded by cornfields. So it wasn't hard. Plenty of people from my high school were farmers. Mm -hmm. So I think there's a whole culture of just like kids being bored. And at least for me growing up, it was a lot of, uh, there was like a strip in Kokomo where people drove their cars back and forth. Yeah, crazy. Yeah, would check out their cars. And then there was always like, um, I know when Chris Gethard was on the Doughboys and he was mentioning like New Jersey, how that's what you would do. And when you, once you could drive was go to all the like haunted places. That's, that's Mm -hmm. Indiana to me too. It's like, there's so many different places we'd go to that were supposedly haunted, but really Mm -hmm. it was just like near somebody's house and they were probably annoyed. But (laughs) (laughs) I found that, did you watch Stranger Things? Oh Yeah. I found that season one of Stranger Things was was truly written to scare uh, of like a Gen X Hoosier. <laughs> it, everything in it, I, it, to me, season one was so scary that I would have to like spoil mm-hmm. an episode before I could watch it. <laughs> but that's the, definitely an eerie Indiana inspiration, I think. Yeah. If you ever saw that show. Yeah. Oh, I remember. I remember that show. Um, it was like the strip pits, like kids drowning in the strip pits. That was a huge Mm. fear. Railroads, railroad safety was a big deal. Um, and just how the kids would just ride their bikes for hours. Yes. (laughs) Just. And nobody knew where we were. Nobody knew. (laughs) As I have kids now, I cannot imagine like, cause I was just like gone like all day riding my bike. Yeah. 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 (laughs) Ride our bikes, hang out in the field. You know, <laughs> and then when you're old enough, you would and in Terre Haute, it was called Cruising the Bash. Mm-hmm. So Wabash Avenue. And then I did marching band and pep band. And so did all the sport adjacent music stuff in high school. So Did you ever compete with Kokomo High School? I don't think Kokomo High School was in our division. Region. Yeah. OK. We were. um probably had like 400 people in my class so we had like uh almost 2,000 students in the school Mm -hmm. uh so I don't remember we in in marching band I think we had to compete against like Ben Davis and they're huge Mm -hmm. so I think we were on the smaller side of D1 was Mm -hmm. it D1 I don't know I I don't know anything about that stuff (laughs) but it was still Basketball was still because the movie Hoosiers, Mm -hmm. um, which is like the ultimate Indiana high school dream, because basketball was the last sport in Indiana where it wasn't classed by school size. And so truly a little rural school could win state. And that was super exciting. Mm -hmm. Um, So I don't remember if they were called classes or divisions. I'm getting way out of my expertise. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, like I said, I was just a cross country person. I, I and then I, I can get into that too when we talk about the topic. Is just I've never been like a really competitive person, and um, uh, I, I think on the Discord you mentioned because you've invited kind of an open door thing for some uh, Discord people, domies, as you mm-hmm. you've put it, <laughs> to uh, come on to your um, podcast and. Uh, you you mentioned like what are you an expert in? I know this is about your favorites too, but I think that kind of gave me some anxiety because <laughs> I don't know. I was like, I w- I would love to be on your podcast, but mm-hmm. I don't know if I'm an expert in anything. And uh, um, I'm not. I feel like to be an expert, you also have to be competitive too. And I'm not. A, mm. I've always been the kind of person that's like, you want this more than I do, so <laughs> <laughs> go ahead. Right. Yeah. Uh, I was uh, very competitive. 
very competitive, very ambitious uh, until the last few years. And then I was like, maybe I don't want to be ambitious anymore. Maybe I want to be just like cool, like level, (laughs) chill. Like maybe I don't have to climb the ladder anymore. Um, And then COVID, which, you know, shuts down any ambition. (laughs) But no, I am not here to interview people who are experts. I'm here to interview people about things they love. That's good. And you can love something without being an expert in it because you're an expert in yourself. That's true. Yeah, yeah. I I was just like, I was, I think I got confused then. I, 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 (laughs) yeah. Because I, I, I think I have like some um, PTSD with the word expert because I, I used to um, write for uh, a content farm called Demand Studios, mm-hmm. and I, it was after I got out of college and I was trying to find technical writing jobs, and I wrote for them for a long time, but I kind of knew how to bleed the system. Mm-hmm. I would like write like. I had like woke up in the morning. I knew I wanted to get eight to 10 articles done and how much money I would make. Yeah. And I would, I knew how much I could do and I knew like how to pick the easy ones out of like when, when they would come out Yeah. and when, (laughs) what to pick. And um, eventually they caught on that. I was somebody in their system that was making too much money. And and, uh, the like owner of the whole uh, content farm was emailing me back and forth. And he was saying, you've been saying you're an expert on these topics that you're putting out. And like, there's like a note thing. And I would say, I'm not an expert on this topic, but I have experience doing this. Mm -hmm. And we went through the semantics of the word expert, like for like back and forth a lot of times. Yeah, (laughs) they basically wanted to get rid of me because they wanted to call me out on something. And uh, yeah, I just, I I don't like that term because I I feel like, can you really fully be an expert on anything anyways? <laughs> right. Right. And and I think true experts always are willing to say, I don't know. And I'll mm-hmm. look into that. And it's the experts who like have no humility are the ones like you do not want to listen to. Mm-hmm. I think it's um, also because those content farms were getting a lot of heat at that time. And they're like, are these really factual? But I was, I had the source, like mm-hmm. I would pick like, how to fix something in a washer or dryer, like even those types of articles. And I was like, Oh, I'm learning something too, but I would, you know, write it in my own words, take it from a manual or from whatever else. And I'm not an expert, but I learned how to do it. And I'm telling you the facts, the facts. So. (laughs) Yeah. Well, in technical writers, which is interesting because Kristen Carion, who was on to talk about Harry Potter fanfic is a technical writer. And it is a skill of saying, of reading a manual of reading something to, to be able to translate from a manual into to plain English is a it's a skill that everybody does not have. So they should have been thrilled that you were able to be so flexible and and trans like honestly just translate for them. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I'm not an expert on anything, but I, I love I love tons of things and I have a great one for today. All right. <laughs> Well, Greg, let's get into it. What do you love? What is one of your favorite things that we're going to talk about? Well, I have I have lots of hobbies and things I love. Um, <clears throat> the one that I thought of for today, you may know um, some about. You may have, <laughs> I'm sure it is on your radar and you always know, but it is a TV show. And I've kind of been obsessive about it. And anyone that like knows me really well knows that it's like kind of part of my personality. But um, the show... Full House is kind of is what I want to talk about. Amazing. <laughs> Amazing. So Full House, like, like Dave Coulier cut it out. Mm-hmm. The, the Olsen twins. Yes. Uh, and John the, Stamos. It's a good time for me to talk about this, too, because I mentioned it on our podcast a few weeks ago or a while ago. And uh, one of my co-hosts, Jaron, he was like, no, that show is terrible. And I was like, no, you're wrong. I, we're not going to get into it. And we didn't get into it. We kind but of... we're going to get into it now. Yes. Yeah. I mean, I'm not going <laughs> to shit on it. Like, I for sure watched plenty of it. You can. I don't. It won't offend me. <laughs> <laughs> but 
Is this a show that you have loved since it was out in the 90s? Or is this something you can't return to as an adult and you're like, this like this works for me? I would say both. So I was born in 85. I think I was the right age of... Um, I just watched a lot of TV. I was definitely a TV kid. So mm-hmm. <laughs> TGIF, I know a lot of kids, you know, raised by TV yeah. growing up in the 90s. Um, that was a big part of their childhood, Nickelodeon, all that stuff. But like, I think that was a show that I just latched onto because for a lot of different reasons, like I even say that there's certain things that happened in that show that I like learned, like not from school or from my parents, like how to tie my shoe. <laughs> really (laughs) yeah and other things which is crazy because it's not like an educational show um but uh I come from like my family's really small like my mom was adopted and my um, dad isn't really close with his family so I I, I always had just my mom and my dad and then pass like um my in in 94 I'm like nine years apart from my brother um he was born so I have a brother, but like I never had like a big family. So yeah. I think I was always, I think people have some people that are like grew up on TV, have that TV show that is just like that cozy mm-hmm. thing that um, they knew, knew they thought, you know, um, even when they got older, they're like, oh yeah, that wasn't good. But I, I it just feels very um, nostalgic and, and cozy to me. But as I kept, my wife and I will watch it over and over and we just started rewatching it again. And we've watched, rewatched it so many times. We had the DVDs now it's on um, Hulu. You can watch anytime, but uh, I've grown to appreciate it on different levels too. Like even yeah. knowing, growing up, knowing more about behind the scenes stuff, but I have like, I legitimately think, cause I, I think there was a point where it's like, yeah, it's ironic to like something like this. I had like full house t-shirt or shirt I mm-hmm. wore all the time. <laughs> And I've incorporated into a lot of like music and like live performances I've done. Yeah. I've like added samples from the show. Um, I mean, I can really get into it. So yeah, I'm not a very obsessive person, but I think uh, I just have a lot of good vibes from that show that I, maybe other people don't have that connection. That's totally cool. But yeah. yeah. Well, I just did a quick Google. So you are one only one year older than the Olsen twins. Yes. So, which means, like, you also, like, grew up with them on the show. Mm -hmm. As long as it was on the air, you were, like, right there with them, Mm -hmm. Um, which is cool. Yeah, yeah. It was, yeah, you're seeing, like, that person. And and even to this day, when I watch, like, the last couple seasons, like, I hate how it kind of had that Urkel effect and became the Michelle show. Mm -hmm. Um, Because there's a lot of bad episodes and things that I don't like. Like, it's not a perfect show. I I don't even know if I would call it a good show. (laughs) But I do think there is legitimately funny things. I think there's like some good acting in it. I think yeah. there's some good writing at times. Um, I mean, I, there, there's an episode that I think is one of like the most perfect episodes of TV. And I kind of, we don't have to get into it now, but I kind of have, uh, I don't have a lot of goals in my life, but this has always been something I've wanted to do. Yeah. <laughs> so tell me about, let's start there. Let's start with what is the perfect episode of Full House? Oh, it is so great. I would recommend it. So if you, if people have never watched Full House, because I think like Fuller House came back and we can get into that too, the mm-hmm. whole Netflix Fuller House thing, but um, which I don't, I, I did not care for. <laughs> but uh, I know I, I sound like a, a Full House elitist. Sounds like such a weird kind of maybe a douchey thing. <laughs> no, I only, I only like the old Full House. I only like the um, Full House, not the Fuller House. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The original. Uh, no, there there is an episode, I think it was like season six. Um, I could be wrong, but if I'm right, that's cool. But <laughs> it's called a uh, secret admirer. And mm-hmm. it's when cause Danny put, uh, is the character of Bob's Bob Saget's character. Um, he's dating this one person. There was like a whole like four or five episode arc. And this um, woman that he's dating has a, uh, a son named Rusty. I don't know if you've, do you remember, recall any of that or? No. Okay. Well, the the thing is that he uh, doesn't, he's not like wanting to, his mom to start dating and doesn't mm-hmm. want to get along with all, with this, um, the, the Tanners, mm-hmm. all of the Tanner girls and everything. So uh, the episode starts that Rusty writes this um, love letter for, to DJ, the oldest Tanner daughter uh, that, um, 
the paper boy has a crush on her and it's very generic. It doesn't say who it's from. And so it's just like this little piece of paper folded up. It gets passed around throughout the whole episode. Mm -hmm. Every single character thinks that somebody has a crush on them, like married characters. (laughs) I feel like it's so like controlled and like goes like the beats are all hit so perfectly. Mm -hmm. So my dream, because I've done stand up comedy, I've done like weird um, improvised things before. I would love to do a one man show of this episode, like of the whole script, which is there's a lot of interactions. So I think there might be some skill involved, but <laughs> there would be wigs and um, right. voices. And it's my dream. That is a, <laughs> <laughs> I it's love a that. Episode. I love that, Greg. So so it is uh, also I mean, people have to keep in mind Full House there's no cell phone. There's no family group chat. There's no like take a picture of it. You didn't see it on Michelle's Snapchat. Um, so it's just a, a a note getting passed around the house. Everybody thinks someone has a crush on them yeah. and then shenanigans ensue. Yeah. Like uh, Jesse thinks like Kimmy or, or Kimmy thinks Jesse wants her or something like Jesse oh, no. is a uh, de- um uh, John Stamos. John Stamos, of course. Yeah, the biggest star that come out of the show, I think, maybe. But it, it, it's just a funny, I don't know. I, I find it, I think there was a time where I was like, oh, the, I used to find this funny as a kid, maybe, or I watched it all the time. I saw the episodes and I watched it later in college. I'm like, aha, uh-huh, this is ironically funny. And now I'm like, oh, there's some legitimately funny things to mm-hmm. me in this. <laughs> I feel like uh, the pairing, not just that episode, but I can name a lot of different episodes where I feel like... Um, uh, um, John Stamos, Dave Coulier, and uh, and Bob Saget, like they really have this sort of good, like uh, they good chemistry that you don't find in a lot of shows sometimes. And it's surprising because a lot of people are just like, oh, that was just that dumb, like corny show. And and it is, but I think that they like really, obviously the writers were like these older yeah <laughs> man in a writer's room and they were in, probably inspired like by the three stooges but the, those three could like pull those kinds of gags off yeah like, in a way that is uh, appreciative to yeah. somebody that likes comedy i think and if you zoom out a little bit for the three people <laughs> listening who didn't watch the show <laughs> full house is danny tanner is a widow mm-hmm. a widower yes and his two best guy friends because they call them uncles but they're not blood relation are they uh john stamos's character jesse consopolis who is actually jesse cochran in the beginning his last name changes but uh he is um pam's uh brother which was uh danny's wife okay. Bob Saget's character yeah and so then... he is actually the uncle jesse is real but uncle joey dave Coulier is not he's, he's just, just a, a buddy and this is at the same time as America's Funniest Home Video. So mm-hmm. Bob Saget is a huge star at the mm-hmm. time who I think now when I think of like anyone currently getting the Bob Saget treatment, I think it's Nicole Byer. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Somebody that can. She is filthy on stage. <laughs> Bob yes. Saget is a filthy stand up comic. But his. TV persona mm-hmm. is so clean, squeaky clean, family friendly. And, and people have nice things to say about them. Like, I never thought about the comparison, but that's really good. Yeah, because people are like, oh, well, he was that dirty, he probably made dirty jokes on set. Or he, because of that, he, there's always like rumors of like, oh, he was actually, he should be canceled for something. But I've always heard nothing but good things about yeah. Bob Saget. <laughs> um, so the the guys move in to help him raise his girls right mm-hmm. that's the premise yeah 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 mm-hmm. and actually um i don't I, I wish i remembered the actor but uh bob saget was not the original person really yeah there is like you can find the pilot i think it might even be on hulu but there was like the first episode is a different person like they have the intro with it and everything mm. yeah <laughs> that's that's wild i will i'll look that up and i'll link to it in the show notes if okay. i can find I've- it Apparently Bob Saget like said he couldn't do it or something. And then he like got freed up and could do it. So it's another one of those like a uh, back to the future kind of things where yep. they film stuff and then it's and a... they're like, no, 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 <laughs> <laughs> the real star is back. Get out. Yeah. <laughs> um, 
So what did you like about Full House when it was on TV? When it was when TGI Friday was your jam? <laughs> I mean, I could talk about TGI, like all those shows for a long time. Um, <laughs> but uh, what was the main rundown? What what uh-huh. were the shows? Because I was always a Thursday night NBC person, mm-hmm. but oh, and Friday too. night marching band. Like I had football games on Friday night. So like TGI Friday wasn't wasn't mm-hmm. my jam. So what what were the shows in that orbit? Um, well, before that, I, I did love the musty TV, too, because yeah. I watched Friends with my mom like all the time. And I mm-hmm. I was probably too young to be like so into Seinfeld, but I watched all the new episodes <laughs> and like probably was way over my head. But uh, the TGI Friday, I can't remember like the original lineup. It always like shifted. And I know Full House went to like Tuesdays, um, like it, it was like at eight. And then um, Home Improvement was like at nine. And I think this was even mentioned on <laughs> Doughboys too, when they talked about Home Improvement was that like uh, the Dana Carvey show, they tried to put that after Home Improvement on Tuesdays. Oh, um, nope. Bad yeah. idea. <laughs> but uh, there was Sabrina the Teenage Witch, uh, Step by Step, um, Boy Meets World, uh, Hang In with Mr. Cooper. Um, funny, I'm probably missing because, I, yeah, they did uh, Family Matters. They yeah. Can, I, those kind of all mixed around. Yeah. yeah. Because I certainly saw plenty of them in syndication. Like, all mm-hmm. of those shows reached syndication, so they, they're they all in my brain somewhere. Mm-hmm. And, and I think what I liked about that, too, is, like, before the MCU or whatever, it was, like, this connected universe because all those characters would jump on other things. And they did? Just, oh, <laughs> how much time do you have? <laughs> we, yeah, we have so much time. <laughs> oh, like, I've... I've joked like for many years that I, and I've, I haven't done it really, but like, like a madman, like have like the, you know, pictures or whatever and mm-hmm. the red string attached and <laughs> to yeah. find out who the murder is. No, there's so many connections. They um, totally implode the whole universe many times. Uh, well, the big one for full house was that Urkel is on an episode. He's one of uh, Stephanie's um, friends, cousins. Okay. And he teaches uh, Uncle Jesse how to dance, do the Urkel. <laughs> <laughs> and somehow that's not the moment where either show jumped the shark. No, no, that's, <laughs> I, I don't know. Man, it's hard to say when Full House might have jumped the shark. And uh, Family Matters, though, I mean, they travel through time. They go to, <laughs> there's clones. That's a whole other thing. Yeah, Family Matters becomes, I thought it was, like, only recently did I learn that it truly ends with, like, a, with, like, the reveal is a- Urkel is an alien what? or something. I don't, I don't think that's true. That's not, that's not the reveal. <laughs> no, he goes to space in the last episode and Laura okay. ends up choosing to marry him. Okay. Yeah. Um. So Urkel <laughs> comes to Full House. Um, do any of them mm-hmm. take a class from Mr. Cooper? Um, oh, I'm sure there was some crossover in Mr. Cooper. You know, I got to like look at my notes, but, um, uh, John Stamos does show up on a, ep- okay. So the first episode of step by step ever, um, there's an, <laughs> there's an episode, this is outside of full house, but there's an episode of family matters where Urkel has a jet pack and he's at the Winslow's house in Chicago. Mm-hmm. And, um, He's flying out, and that's how the episode ends. Mm-hmm. And I think this must have been on TGF. So then the first episode of Step by Step was uh, Urkel crashes into their backyard. Oh. The family of Step by Step, which they're like <laughs> in Wisconsin, I believe, which I guess is possible. But <laughs> <laughs> uh, And so they're like, oh, I, I guess that was like the, a backdoor pilot, but it was like you know, the real pilot or right. the real first episode. So, uh, yeah. And that, that's one thing that blows it up too. Cause there are later seasons, late season of step-by-step. Step, um, uh, what, oh, geez, what's her Donna, um, uh, or not Donna Summers. Um, Suzanne Summers mm-hmm. is the, the main, um, the mom, um, character and step-by-step step, and she, uh, starts a haircutting business with, uh, um, Bronson, Pinshot, uh, oh, from uh, Perfect Strangers. Okay, 
which Family Matters is a spinoff of Perfect Strangers too, because the mom from <laughs> Family Matters was the elevator operator in Family Matters or in Perfect Strangers. Which Holy is shit. weird that there was a time where they were like, okay, this very tertiary, tertiary character that's just an elevator operator that's like barely seen. We're mm-hmm. going to spin off and let, let's see what's going on with her family and her life. Wow. But it, yeah, his character on Step by Step isn't um, a Balky. Okay. But, uh, <laughs> he, uh, he does a similar like fake accent or something. Mm-hmm. And um, John Stamos comes by their salon or whatever. And, and they're just like, hey, it's John Stamos. But wait a minute. Urkel's been on your show. Urkel was on Full House. So that means it's Uncle Jesse. It's imploded, yeah. Yeah. Like you're acknowledging. I, I I think a lot of those shows also did a lot of uh, breaking the fourth wall in some bad ways, and Fuller House did that too. But Yeah. <laughs> when did... So you you kept watching it through college or college? It was an ironic treat. I think so. Yeah, I I, I think um, it was like this would be funny. Like in, uh, I I think I was definitely a, with my wife too. Let's watch you know something that's going to make us laugh that's unintentionally funny mm-hmm. or, or laugh at the unintentional funny moments. And then it just became like, well, actually, maybe we do. <laughs> we're laughing at real things in this, right? So uh, we're just becoming. Uh, works that like full house so i think yeah. that happened um and what are some of your other favorite episodes oh man <laughs> there's two a day to name um one is uh, a there's a lot of good early ones but um and the later ones get bad like how i said it was became like the michelle tanner show or the um olsen twin show mm-hmm. but there's one where uh it's right after an episode I hate, and I'll, I'll usually skip it. It's where um, uh, um, John Stamos is a character, uh, his grandpa, I guess it's, uh, so it's the kid's like great grandpa, like comes to visit and he dies. And it's about like, it, it's, I mean, it, I guess it's a good episode about teaching kids about that it's okay to like share your feelings and stuff. Yeah. So there's some good things about it for a TV show that kids are watching. But uh, right after that, they have an episode where, um Jesse's cousin or comes and it's just John Stamos playing this Greek character so it's the whole like <laughs> you gotta love that 90s trope yes. of the side by side and this one did it fairly well but there's a scene at the end where they're like trying to fight each other <laughs> it's uh-huh. so funny with the wigs changing um but there's a part where like this the cousin is like trying to trick them and earn money and he's starting a dance uh, a dance-a-thon so that People can give him money so he can go to Florida to Disney World. I don't know. It's part of the plot. <laughs> right. He uh, So <laughs> Rebecca, who is um, Jesse's wife, um, tries to trick uh, um, Stavros, is Jesse's cousin, to admit like his whole plan over a microphone. Mm-hmm. And um, she's like, oh, she's pretending she's into him because he's like tried to like he's flirted with her and stuff. And he wants, she wants to show him how much of a scumbag he, bag he is and all that. And uh, he's like, you know what? She says, like, you know what I would really want to do? And he goes, paint sad uh, clowns on my toenails. And the way he says it is so <laughs> funny. Because like, it's just such a dumb line. Like, I don't know if it was actually written or I can't imagine, like, if John Stamos, like, improvised that. But I don't know. It, it's just a, such a silly, dumb episode after such a big like important episode right. that uh, I don't know. I, I find that really funny, especially when they do the, I, I, I think uh, the big one, of course, that I think most people have, even if they haven't seen full house, maybe have like seen it on YouTube is like his band, uh, Jesse and the Rippers has their music video forever, mm-hmm. which is like a cover of a beach boys song. Yeah. And it's, it's really funny. Like it's, un- it's definitely unintentionally funny <laughs> Yeah, because uh he's like got his uh, a vest with his no shirt under it and uh he's just like on an island somewhere playing Mm -hmm. with his band and just looking at the camera all lovingly and but didn't john stamos actually play with the 
Beach Boys. Oh yeah. For a time, I, was that is that a real memory? Yeah, was he yeah. In the video th- for Kokomo. Ooh, I don't know. I I think he he's done stuff later on, but I think he was a big part of like he's always like a big part of his character was like being an Elvis freak, and he yeah. was in real life, and I think he wanted he's been friends with the Beach Boys and stuff. So I mean, he's incorporated that in like singing. It's one of those shows that has let like characters kind of put part of their personalities in, which I like when shows do that because it kind of makes the show a little more fuller um, if they do it in a good way, I guess, with like not overpowering their personalities. But yeah, so he is in the Kokomo video. He's playing the steel drum. (laughs) And when I Google John Stamos Beach Boys, Mm -hmm. The top stories from the last few days are that he is doing a state fair. Every state fair that the Beach Boys are playing at this summer, John Stamos is is performing with them. Oh, wow. So Missouri and Iowa are both getting. Not Indiana. Like we have Kokomo here. I know. (laughs) Let's see. Oh, the Beach Boys are coming to Ravinia. They're coming to Chicago (laughs) with John Stamos. Wow. Wow. All right, John Samos Beach Boys, Indiana. I feel like he's a little like he's just doing that because he wants to. Like he's not like earning the money he could earn elsewhere. Right. <laughs> uh, nope. That's and and I've heard that whenever I tell people I'm from Kokomo, Indiana, that's like always a thing. I've heard that a million times. Yeah, yeah. I. It's. It was hard not to sing it immediately <laughs> earlier, not even knowing we were going to get to John Stamos and the Beach Boys. Yeah. yeah. The Beach Boys stuff on that show is so cheesy. Like everything's so cheesy. So like if, I don't know, you really have to have a, like to like it in a way that I do, I guess you would have to have that big nostalgia factor and then be able to kind of look past all the corniness and bad mm-hmm. stuff in it. <laughs> of just, Yeah what was very common in that era, but yeah. Yeah. Cause you get, I mean, it's, it's, you know, like school shenanigans, right? Like, cause the girls, I mean, the show runs long enough that they all become teenagers, right? Oh, uh, um, Michelle does not. Okay. Um, yeah. I believe she's just in elementary still maybe when the show ends. But. Okay. But does like DJ, the DJ and Kimmy go off. Kimmy's the best friend, right? Mm hmm. How is any of this in my head? Do, do they go off to college and they're off the show or do they find ways to keep them in the house? They all stayed in the house. I don't know what would have like, cause the last season I believe was the eighth season and um, they wanted, they had a deal to move to UPN. There was some other shows that did, mm-hmm. um, which was like the new channel that um, was like kind of buying out some of those shows that were like, dipping in the ratings kind of past their prime. Yeah. And uh, it was ultimately John Stamos that said, I'm not going to do it. And since he didn't want to do it, others didn't sign on to continue forward. So. Okay. Cause they were, cause Dave Coulier just came. He, I knew him from, you can't do that on television. Mm. Uh, was he on it? You just, just his Alanis Morissette connection. <laughs> no, he was on, <laughs> he was, uh, I mean, where was he doing cut it out? before he was he a stand-up four. comic oh, yes yes he was he was a stand-up comic he might have been on maybe that's how he met alanis <laughs> dave coulier nickelodeon out of control he was the host oh, of out of control that sounds, yeah. was that it's, on nickelodeon too it was a nickelodeon game mm-hmm. show mm-hmm. and it was about remote controls i think but yeah so yeah, i, I knew it was stick. somewhere yeah, Bob Saget and him were both comedians, but very like wildly different comedians. Yeah. And John Stamos was like a general hospital guy. Like he was mm-hmm. like trying to do serious acting. And um yeah, I I think it's interesting. I, I think they're all good actors and um I think that they could work with the material and kind of elevate it in some ways that a lot of people couldn't on a lot of shows that I wouldn't like I, I've tried to watch like one no no offense if it's something you like, but like Big Bang Theory, like I've tried to watch that and <laughs> nope. Uh, two, two, two men or two and a half, two and men. half men. Yeah, I, I can't. Yeah, I, I just find those because like just sitcoms are different. They like really switched to like 
as far as what they were like a family oriented sitcom, there really isn't much, there wasn't much of those after the late nineties. I feel like. Yeah. They only started coming back when ABC did. I think these are all ABC shows. They Mm -hmm. are, they're all Hulu shows for me. So who knows? (laughs) Um, But blackish fresh off the boat and the Goldbergs. Yeah. For that sure. to me I, is I like the return definitely. of the family sitcom. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because a lot of those other ones, like the CBS, the Chuck Lorre stuff is like way overtly sexual, not like something you watch with your kids or anything. Right. Yet. Right. More workplace comedies or mm-hmm. school comedies, I guess. Well, Big Bang Theory, I would still say is a workplace comedy, <laughs> even though it's yeah. academic. Mm hmm. But yeah, you're right. It was, uh, I didn't think about that, that the era of the family centered, it kind of became, they became animated, I guess. Mm-hmm. The Simpsons never went away. <laughs> Bob's Burger is a good mm-hmm. family comedy. Yeah, it's it, it's just not, yeah, it's different with streaming too. It's not like it, it was at that time where it was appointment TV and watching it on a Friday or Tuesday. Um yeah. <laughs> right. Right. You're just trying to binge it at the same time as everyone in your office instead of uh, keep up with the show. Mm-hmm. What are some of your other either favorite moments or storylines? It doesn't have to be full episodes, but mm-hmm. things where you thought like particular actors really were outstanding. I feel like probably John Stanless probably has the best like acting skills out of all out of mm-hmm. all of them but um and, and i'm like i'm nobody to like say like what's the best acting i i definitely watch a lot of movies and to like say i'm obsessive about like full house or something in a way is like i probably watch more movies and tv shows than most people but i do not remember a lot of characters and plots of a mm-hmm. lot of things i usually am very visual and like full house isn't a very visual thing it's just something that i've watched a lot so. yeah <laughs> um i'm trying to think uh I, I, I like the outrageous stuff that is very cliche with like just how they've had every type of animal on the show. There's an episode mm-hmm. with a pig and I was trying to convince <laughs> my wife that um, like trying to do the Mandela effect that uh, Jesse had sex with the pig. <laughs> <laughs> I, I guess just Michelle, Br- like he, she said she was going to be watching a neighbor's dog or something and there's a pig in the house and like Danny, her dad is like a notorious clean freak is like a big thing about his character, mm-hmm. but he's, he's cool with this pig staying there, I guess. And uh, I guess um, Jesse is in bed. I, and this is another thing about the show. It's a lot of people living in a house. <laughs> Too <Right>. many people. <laughs> well, yeah. And don't you like after a year of, of a year and a half of COVID precautions, really feel it a lot more how many people were in that house oh yeah that's a lot of adult bodies in one house they like well the whole like uh geography of the house doesn't make sense based on the set and where people come out of the stairs and everything Mm -hmm. (laughs) and it changes over time um and they redo the rooms jesse and his wife and then their twins nikki and alex they live up in the attic and they like totally redo it um but uh yeah, it, it none of it makes any sense. <laughs> what is Danny's occupation? Uh he he started in the early seasons as a sport sportscaster and okay. then he does wake up uh San San Francisco. But I okay. don't know if we ever mentioned that San Francisco is like the huge part of the show. So Right. Yeah. Right. It's the house the house is uh, one of the painted painted ladies, a Victorian mm-hmm. uh house across the street from Dolores Park? I'm not Mission? sure. I You can actually see. I've never been to San Francisco, but my wife was there a few years ago, and I know she wanted to see it, but I think it wasn't like she was with a, a work group, so it wasn't like something she could go easily see. But right. yeah, it's it's a real house. and Yeah, I think, I believe it's across the street from like a, a big park where people will, mm-hmm. like with a hill. I had an internship in San Francisco in 1996, and I believe that is the park where I learned how to um, like cut a mango to share it at a picnic, <laughs> which is a very specific thing, <laughs> but not something somebody from in- 
a 19 year old from Indiana would know how to do. <laughs> yeah. I was wowed. I was wowed by it. So it's an interesting intern uh, skill. <laughs> yeah. I, I was uh, organizing a cross country bicycle trip. I was in mm-hmm. the office and we were finding them like places to sleep, meals, safe highways to ride their bikes on. And this was just like a weekend out with the other interns and somebody had a mango and they like cut it around the pit and open it up. And then they cut the flesh like into squares and then popped it upside down. Like a mm-hmm. porcupine. Yeah, I've seen that. I don't, yeah. I, I've tried it once and I wasn't able to do it. Yeah. I was just, I don't know if I'd had mango that wasn't frozen before. <laughs> I mean, it was 1996. Who knows? I'm. I, it might have not. It might have been too early. But did anybody say nobody touched the mango? <laughs> no. What's that from? <laughs> That's from Saturday Night Live. Oh. <laughs> They've mentioned it a couple times. That Doughboys. It was Chris <laughs> Kattan's character oh. was Mango, where he just yes. He was a shirtless um, person that was like I don't even know. I don't know what it was. <laughs> there was no reason for it. Yeah, I think. He was later in the 90s, 1996 to 2003. Oh, so yeah. close for somebody making that reference during the mango. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we just missed it. <laughs> <laughs> um, are your have your kids been introduced to Full House yet? Um, yeah, they've this- seen. <laughs> they've seen some of it uh, like we let our son stay up and like he watched an episode with us because we're like you can stay up late this night but this is what i were watching and he like watched it all um it, it it's nice that it's something that is adult i guess mm-hmm. but you can also show with your kids and i guess that's like kind of nostalgia of, like when four house came out it's like oh this is something i used to watch growing up and now you can watch it with me i think that's just like entertainment in general right now right but, <laughs> So, so yeah, so you said you did not like the reboot. No, not, not really. We, 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 my wife and I tried to stick with it, but um, it really felt more like a Disney show. Like Disney had like the um, boy meets world updated version. It was like girl meets world. And Mm -hmm. it it doesn't have the same feel as the original, like the way the jokes land. There's just this more tween vibe than there was like, this is a family vibe. Like there's, it's a, it's very it's written very differently like the whole thing and there there was like the first episode of Fuller House I think like they make a Donald Trump joke they like mm. make a fact of, or they make a point to say oh Mary Kay and Ashley Olsen aren't on the show for some reason you know and they like look at the camera and wink and I'm like this is not the Full House that I like yeah so I, it's more of like oh there's that character again and that's what a lot of stuff is now I mean Ghostbusters all this mm-hmm. stuff is just like oh, you're seeing these people older, the same character, but they're meeting again. And yeah, it's not good. <laughs> I'm glad, I mean, I'm, if people enjoy it, that's great. And I, it, that, that's fine, but it, it just wasn't for me, for somebody that really liked the original series. Yeah. I thought that when they rebooted Roseanne as the Connors, mm. I thought they did a pretty, it was a pretty good reboot far as, uh, I mean, Roseanne ended with the like, she won the lottery, but then woke up and realized Dan was dead, yeah, but Dan yeah. wasn't dead or, right? Like it kind of went off, mm-hmm. <laughs> off the rails. Yes. And how, the ways they reoriented it when they brought it back and then after Roseanne was canceled mm-hmm. as a person, not as a show how they like just straight up dealt with opioid addiction Mm -hmm. and how it impacted the family and grieving, but still doing comedy and, and modern family issues without being Mm -hmm. too preachy. Like I felt like that was a reboot that handled it well without winking at the audience. Those are really good actors too. And that's, I think uh, something that those shows did back in the day and and they were smart enough to do that with the, the reboot for the Connors, but like, Full House like had a little touch of that because like there were episodes of like the reasons like 
why their mother died was because she got hit by a drunk driver. So there was a lot of like emotional things. It's like, look, why don't I have a mom and I have three dads kind of thing. Mm-hmm. They didn't like just kind of gloss over it and just make dumb jokes all the time. Right. Um, I mean, that got kind of lost in later seasons, but even like family matters too. Like there was a lot of like big episodes about racism and, yeah. and living in Chicago and, and being black and, then later just become became Urkel uh, um, traveling back in time to medieval time to fight people and stuff. I, I don't... That's so weird. <laughs> and then I guess there's no, probably no season two of Fuller House since she, Lori Laughlin got arrested. There, there's been like four seasons. I believe oh. it's over now. Yeah. Okay. There's been plenty of seasons. I think they kind of like did, Netflix like half seasons like mm-hmm. they would release half and then the other half um, yeah. but my wife and I didn't we we didn't finish the last episode we got so far we got too far but it was like this is we can't do it anymore I it's one of those things like you climb <laughs> you climb all the way to like a really shitty mountain and yeah <laughs> you're like why did we even do this like we don't mm-hmm. want to do this yeah yeah why did we spend the time doing this <laughs> yeah I felt that way with Mad Men. <laughs> really? I was just like, they're all assholes. Wow. They're like, nobody has a redeemable bone in their body. <laughs> now my just... co-host, my co-host Jaron says that's like a great show. You need to watch that. But I still haven't. He, he refuses to watch Breaking Bad because he doesn't like the setting. So I'm kind of like, eh. Yeah, like he doesn't like Albuquerque or he doesn't like the idea of like chemistry teacher becomes meth guy. He doesn't like desert setting. Like, yeah, he doesn't like New Mexico and he doesn't, he won't watch Lost because he doesn't like islands. And I'm like, (laughs) come on. I mean. (laughs) All right. It's fine if you don't like it because of other things, but. (laughs) I don't like islands. (laughs) So you miss out on like Lost, Gilligan's Mm. Island. Hawaii Five O. That I can't I, think of any other island shows. I plan on taking him to the old beach and making him old in one day. So, oh, did you see him. that? Yeah, I did. Is it the preview's too scary for me? I know M mm. Night Shyamalan is a hit or miss director. Oh, yeah. Was mm-hmm. this a hit or a miss? Uh, it was kind of some. I took my wife to it, and she's not. She, she watched The Visit, which is like more, um, I guess, uh, purposefully like trying to be bad, like more like B movie, like funny or whatever. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, it's it is what it is. But this one is a little more serious at times. Like it doesn't lean in enough maybe yeah. to that um, sort of humor. But uh, yeah, there's a point of contention that I, I kind of I liked it. A good amount and she thought it was like the worst thing she ever seen i i think it's been pretty 50 50 and a lot of people know his track record anyways but yeah yeah either you're like on board or you're not so that's pretty much yeah i'm not on board they were told not to go to that beach and they went yeah. so i don't well they weren't told not to but it's in the preview they didn't in see the, preview, the preview they're told not to go to the beach by who I don't. Like, I don't know. By the person at the Airbnb or the resort or something. Hmm, I don't know. I don't think that happens in the movie. Maybe it is in the trailer. Oh. I actually didn't. I never watched the trailer. I just saw the movie. So. You should look up the trailer because I feel like they're given very specific. <laughs> don't go to the beach, and then they go to the beach, and then crazy stuff happens, and it's like, well, yeah, they told you not to go. Well, the resort takes them there in the movie, so. Huh. <laughs> Might be Mandela affected here. Yeah. Oh, kitty. Hi, Spidey. Yeah, I I work downtown today, so he's like, he's got to have some special time. There you go. Take it away. Take it somewhere. Right under the microphone. That's how, that's the type of podcast I like to have. (laughs) (laughs) He's 20. Oh, wow. So he kind of gets, there's not a lot of rules anymore. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, that, that's awesome, though. He was born on the patio of a restaurant where I was a waitress in Durango, Colorado. Wow. So as we uh, start to wrap up, what are, if, do you have some, like, if somebody has 
either never seen Full House or is revisiting it, what are some episodes that you think are good for getting people hooked? Definitely that one that I said is my favorite, which is Secret Admirer. But Mm -hmm. I think that, um, I don't know, it's kind of like going back to the M. Night Shyamalan. Either you like are going to be on board or you're Mm -hmm. not kind of things. So like, I don't think it's like one of those things like fish where you got to see them live and then you're going to get it kind of thing. Right. (laughs) I think it's more of like, if you want to watch it and kind of laugh at like styles from the Mm nineties and like some cameos and things like that, that's definitely there and fun. Um, I mean, there's star search, there's uh, the beach boys, obviously Um, there's all kinds of things that are just very, uh, corny and of that time um mm-hmm. so I, if you're looking to just like laugh or uh <laughs> at something stupid I, I think you'd probably find it in a lot of different episodes um probably like in the middle the later ones I feel like might get a little too uh trying to be dramatic or too Michelle forward so yeah. probably like in the middle seasons is what I would recommend okay and then people can put it on like a warm blanket a, a warm 1990s nostalgia mm-hmm. blanket with a mango. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Fantastic. So Greg, where can people uh, follow you online or, or where would you like to be found on the internet? <laughs> if you would like to be found on uh, the internet. Yeah. I'm on Twitter at um, MC Greg. Uh, that's E M C E E Greg, which is also my dose scored handle. I guess it's what I use for everything, but um yeah, I tried to tweet um, on there, just stupid Jack Candy thoughts. That's what I always thought Twitter was for anyways, was just mm-hmm. shower thoughts, but I guess I was wrong. <laughs> it's also but, for the downfall of democracy, but what yeah. else? And um, yeah, I, I post our episodes for our um, podcast on there, uh, Fresh Questions Air, which you can find um, wherever you find podcasts for the most part. We're, we're really bad at podcasts. Like I, I do things... Um, uh, they're like, I, I think, uh, where, where you watch something, you're like, this is bad, but they put a lot of work into <laughs> it and it's entertaining and fun. That's kind of my vibe. Um, yeah. Yeah. You did have, you did <laughs> so, have, yeah, a, yeah. Fresh questions there. Fresh questions there. You did have, uh, Emma Erdbrink on to talk about mm-hmm. road trips recently. Mm-hmm. You had we've we've had a couple of some some guests crossover. Kyle Loader, who came on my podcast to talk about oh, yeah. Warhammer 40k. <laughs> yes. Yeah, you've got a lot. You guys have been going steady. You've got up over 50 episodes. Now, mm-hmm. was this a, a COVID uh, podcast for you guys or did you had you started before? Uh, well, that, that's a good story. Before COVID, we actually tried to do a podcast. We had about like. 16 episodes where we were going to do a a podcast where the idea was this is the last idea of a podcast ever the last podcast Mm -hmm. Um, but it was just about the band crazy town okay and it was called crazy townies and uh uh, we um instead of like doing every album because i don't even know if that we we didn't know that much about band the band but it was more like kind of making fun of but also appreciating new metal (laughs) and uh we did every song from crazy townies we didn't even make it or from crazy town we didn't even make it through the first album and uh um it became like a murder podcast somehow but it's still i think it's still (laughs) out there but uh yeah we just decided to do something again and it it has been kind of a quarantine thing of like socializing with friends and um uh, jaren's in michigan brad is in canada and uh yeah it's been nice to kind of like force ourselves to meet and like just screw around and chat yeah Great. So people can can find you on Fresh Questions Air. Mm-hmm. They can um, find Full House uh, on probably Hulu is, it's on Hulu. On yeah, Hulu. Sure. yeah. Great. Um, I'm gonna look and see if I can find the pilot, the the ba- the Bob Saget free pilot. <laughs> nice. Um, to share in the show notes as well. Awesome. Awesome. Well, Greg, thank you. This has been a blast. Yeah. Thank you. 
Thank you for listening to Finding Favorites with Leah Jones. Please make sure to subscribe and drop us a five-star review on iTunes. Now, go out and enjoy your favorite things.